What's up guys, ViperPD here, and today it has been forever since I done an updated Helio Spring Butterfly video. And we actually have something really cool because now they have Pegasus out, which is a brand new UI for Butterfly. So if you're on Butterfly 3.6 or newer, uh, this should be the new UI you want to go ahead and use. So we're going to go ahead and go over that, do a brief overview, then we're going to do a setup of the Helio and some of the couple little new features that it has come out with since the last video I've done quite a few months ago. So let's go ahead and get to the computer and check everything out. All right, guys, we're on the computer. I am on Google. And pretty much the first thing you want to go ahead and do to get Pegasus on your flight controller, um, on your computer, is uh, download, is type in Pegasus Butterfly Helio RC. It'll bring you right to this page right here. And depending on what kind of operating system you have in your computer, uh, you'll pick on whatever one you want and then install it. And I'm using Windows 10, so I'm going to use the .exe file. So we went ahead and installed that already. And once you have that installed, that's my 3D print printing, so ignore that. And we're going to go right to Pegasus right here on my desktop. So you want to install it. And the first thing you're going to see is you're going to see this um, screen here. Um, if you're on anything lower, I believe, than 3.6, I believe, um, it might work with 3.5, I'm not positively sure, but what you want to go ahead and do is it's going to ask you to type, you're going to want to connect your flight controller, it's going to still do this, and you want to go ahead and go in the CLI and just type BL so it goes in DFU mode. Once it's in DFU mode, you flash uh, Butterfly 3.6, and then you want to go ahead and... Um, restart it and then it should go ahead and set up. So I'm going to connect my flight controller here and it's going to go ahead and detect it. Okay, so now we're in the pre-flight check checklist. This is the brand new Pegasus UI and to get around you want to go ahead and click on that little up there and you'll see all this cool stuff. So the first thing you have to do after you flash it is go ahead here to version Go to here to go to IMUF version and click on this. So this is where it's going to bring you to flash the IMUF on your flight controller. They actually did this separately so then they can do a lot of updates on this and then you don't have to flash a new uh, pretty much hex every time that you want to update to a newer version. So. I'm on Starbuck, which if you notice right here, it adds the um, aggressive filtering on roll, pitch, yaw, and separately. So you can go ahead and pro uh, target the problematic axis without over filtering the others, which is really cool. Um, that's what I have on mine right now. But if you don't want that, you can go ahead and go to Odin, or this is the original one, the Caprica. But I already have flash this, and pretty much what you want to pick, and then just click flash, and then you're done. So then I'm going to go ahead and go back. And also another little thing too, before we get jump into all the features, you can click on this right here, and this is where you'll be able to flash the firmware. So if I choose the file or whatever, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to flash it because I don't want to save some time on the video. But this is where you'll go ahead and flash it. You'll find your version, see right there, and then you flash it from there. And then you want to do race flash yes on everything that you do do, but if you want to make a little backup for a little secret, you can. But let me go ahead and go back here. Click on that, exit that, and go back. Okay. So now I am in here. We need to disconnect my flight controller because it's wanting to flash. There we go. So now we're going to be back in here. So now we're at the main screen. So click on this again. We have our pre-flight checklist, PIDs, motor light, all the same things kind of like we had in butter, uh, the original Butterfly or Beta Flight. So if you notice right off the bat, we have Orientation Assistant. What is that? Well, and also Motor Assistant. Orientation Assistant, if you click on it, it's going to reset your gyro. You don't have to do anything. This is pretty much like a automated setup. I made sure my quad's flat. And then I'm going to go ahead and position the quad on its nose. Click on it again. And it's going to know that I already detected, detected it was counterclockwise 180 degrees. Or clockwise 180 degrees. So once you're done with that, click finish. 
And then you can do the same thing for motor assistant. I'm not going to go all the way into that, but pretty much what it's going to do is going to ask you um, to take your props off, connect a battery, and then it's going to be able to map what motors to what, and it's going to really help out with getting everything set up. So we're going to skip over that because I don't want to go into that too much. But what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go right to ports because this is kind of like what I do first when I set up a new quad. And I have my receiver set to Crossfire on UART 3. And then I have my Smart Audio on UART 2. Now, whatever quad you're setting up, it might be different. You have to see what UART you have yours connected to to be able to know. But then once you're done with that, you can come up here to hit click Save. It's going to reboot. And then you're going to be able to go into the next spot. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to get to the features right here. And we have all the same things as we did in the configuration page as beta flight and the old butterfly. So I have my OSD enabled, I have a receiver enabled. Um, if you have analog, um, not analog, ESC telemetry, if you have telemetry hooked up to your BHELI32 ESCs, you can go ahead and click on that to enable it. Um, Legacy Smart Audio, if you have like an AKK um, VTX, that's one that pops in my head, um, they had some issues. I think even the Mach 3 VTX had it too, where or Mach 2, Mach 2 VTX. I think the Mach 3 just came out. But click on the Legacy Smart Audio, and you should be able to get your Smart Audio working if you're having some problems getting your Smart Audio to work. Um, I don't have that problem, so I'm going to leave that off. And I have telemetry enabled, and I have anti-gravity enabled. Now, that's up to you if you want to try it. Um, they say, Butterfly devs say to leave it off. Um, it's supposed to be better. Um, but if you're see, getting a lot of bounce back, you can play with it, put it on, take it off, see how you like it. But I'm gonna leave, I have mine on and I am playing with it. Next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is go to the, I'm gonna go down the list. So let's go ahead and go to the PIDs. Um, the only thing you wanna go ahead and change on here is now if you're running, if you like to have flip over after crash mode, if you like to have that, um, then you wanna use D-Shot. If you want to use, uh, don't wanna use it and you don't care, on the Helio Springboard, you can run this at 3232 and then you can run it on pro shots or a multi shot to get that 32k sampling. Since I like to use flip over after crash mode, I need the most you can run on D shot is 1616. So I have D shot 1200 enabled. Now, if you're not using BHELI 32 ESCs, then you probably have to use D shot 600 or 300, whatever one your ESC support. Um, but that's how I have mine set up right there. And then this is all default right there. And then what we're going to do is go to the aux. Actually, we'll go to the motor layouts. Um, this is another spot where you can change some little things. I have everything pretty much defaulted. Um, now, orientation assistant, we already went over that. Motor assistant, like I said, I'm not going to go too much into that. You click on that. It's going to ask you to take your props off and set up your motors that way, which is really nice. It's a lot of race flight things coming into Butterfly, as we can tell, a lot of the automation. Then I have my rates right here. And you see here, these are my personal rates that I use. So if whatever rates you want to use, you click to put those in there. And then this is the kind of like little graph for the sticks. And if you are on race flight, you can click race flight and you can use your race flight race flight rates if you want to, which is a really nice little new implementation there. Then we have our filters, which I left them all default right now because um, I'm still playing around with it. This is where you'll enable that aggressive filtering if you're on Starbuck right here. And right here is where you can change your Q values on the IMUF or the gyro trust, they call it. The more uh, trust, the higher, the less filtering. The lower, the more, the less trust you trust it, and the more aggressive filtering that you'll get. And this graph right here is for annotation. This is pretty much will tell you where your noise is. If you have um, a black box log, you can look at it, and this will change according to how you change these values right here. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to voltage and current. I usually don't change much in here. Uh, There's another spot where you can use ESC telemetry and click that on. 
and then we have our ports, which you already went over. And right, we're on the receiver page, and I'm on Crossfire, so I can't use this because it's not set up yet. But the receiver assistant right here will pretty much automatically set up your receiver according to what receiver you're using. So if you're on FrySky, um, SBus, uh, FlySky, and Spectrum, you can go ahead and use this receiver assistant to set up set it up really easy. And since I'm on Crossfire, it does not it's not set up yet. But if you click on Show Receiver Data, this is where you'll go ahead and set up your um, your 1,000, 2,000, and 1,500 midpoints on your radio. So when you click on that, and you also set up, you can see your aux channels too moving back and forth. And then we have also our OSD right here, which is kind of the same as Betaflight and Butterflight right here. And you can take these and move them around however you want. So I'm not going to go into that too much. This is how I have mine set up. And then you also can change your fonts right there too before I get off this. Then we have GPS and tracking. I don't use GPS, so I'm not going to go really into this much, but they do have this screen as well. Then we also have our features, which is kind of like the, the um, configuration page on the Betaflight and Butterflight old versions. And this is what I have enabled. Depending on what you want enabled, you would click on that. Like I said, I already have any gravity on. And then we also have our VTX channel. So you can set your VTX channel here. Um, just in case you're having a problem where you can't get it to switch over, you can technically try to force it through here. You gotta see if you can get it to work. And then we have our black box log right there. And then we have advanced. Advanced is pretty much every single CLI command you can think of. On where you can actually see it and you don't have to worry about trying to remember what command to put it in. And if you're looking at this and you're like, well, why don't you have this on Kalman? Well, this is a Helio Spring flight controller and the D-term low pass filter needs to be on bi quad. So we're gonna leave that alone. But if you're on anything else than a Helio Spring, you can change this over to Kalman. And you just click on that, click Kalman, and then click save. But everything else on this, I pretty much are leaving default. Um, fly it around, see how you like it, and then you can chart, char start charging, changing things on here. And on the Helio Spring, what you want to go ahead and do after you get it all set up on this is when you go to filters, you can start messing with these 3,000 values, adding or decreasing them according to how much jitters you're getting in it. Uh, you can also change your low-pass filters, but I would recommend if you're using changing these values here to make sure you do a black box log, just make sure you don't burn a motor out or anything like that. But yeah, so that should pretty much do it for the Helio Spring flight controller setup and the little overview of the new Pegasus UI for Butterflight. Um, I appreciate you guys watching, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another video. Peace.